Hey gamers, it's Grind This Game here with a guide for the Payday Extraction Quest, which is a doozy. It's a long one. I gotta warn you. Now this quest comes after the Avalanche Quest, which itself is a very long quest, uh, and then the Snowblind Quest. Uh, and I've got some tips here for you, which uh, you can pause the video if you want, and hopefully these will just save you some time on this mission, because um, it ended up taking me 16 hours, but uh, you could probably get it down to five or six if you follow some of these tips in here. I'll go into each uh, each one of these as I kind of go through the video, but just I'll go through them quickly here. It's a long grind. Uh, it's not the best way to get exotics. There's actually a different quest called Deep Vein Extraction, so do that instead. But this one does open up the ability to drill exotics uh, on the map. Um, this is the most important point. You can destroy the material processor when you're done with it, making composites. And then once you cook the composites in the electric furnace, you can destroy it to get half the materials back, uh, which is going to save you grinding a lot of gold and copper. Uh, number four here, craft the extractor at the drill site. I didn't end up doing this. Uh, if you're a solo player, there's only one G slot uh, that you can put things on. The radar takes up the G slot and the extractor takes up the G slot. So uh, if you bring the extractor to the drill site and then craft the extractor at site, it saves you a trip. Uh, number five, make sure to upgrade your pickaxe to platinum before you go mining those gold nodes. You'll get more gold out of each node and it'll uh, save you running around the map a lot. And later on, if you can afford it, uh, upgrade to titanium, you'll get 140% uh, yield out of that. Uh, the radar, it doesn't use power, so you don't need to bring the generator. It's self-powered. Uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, start making biofuel early. Once you've got the biofuel composter, up and uh, it's working get six cans of biofuel uh, full you're going to need that to power the extractor at the very end the other method is to bring the biofuel composter thing to the site and then make your fuel but it takes a very long time like probably 20 30 minutes to make the biofuel so uh, number nine extractor does not need the generator it's uh it only needs the biofuel so but it requires six cans of it uh, the first time I did this, or the only time I did this quest, I only brought one can the first time, so I had to run all the way back to base, get five more cans, and, and come back, which made the quest longer. Uh, at the very end, ex uh, exotics in your inventory do make it into orbit. There's six slots on the on the launch ship that takes you back to orbit, uh, so it seems like you can't bring them all, but if it's in your inventory, some people say it has to go on your hotbar, but I just left mine in my inventory and it worked fine. And then number 11, set up your base central to... The caves and i'll show you a cave map that shows you all the caves that i hit so we'll get into each one of these in the video but uh, hopefully that gives you a good overview of what we're going to talk about now here's the loadout that i used uh, oxygen can knife uh, pick the mass dampener which makes you run faster five percent faster you can actually stack two of those and then finally the water can especially where exotics are don't know if it's researchers or some damn bot telling them there's exotics in the region. But either way, you're the one that's got to track them down. So find a spot, set a radar up, and go from there. Extractor will come in handy too, if you manage to find something. Good luck out there. So here's a screenshot from uh, an Icarus interactive map site. I'll leave a link to that in the description, but uh, I ended up visiting 13 different caves. Um, I didn't need to visit that many in the end because I could have gotten some materials back from destroying uh, the material processor and the electric furnace, but live and learn. Uh, the big caves had between one and uh, four. I, I lucked out on one cave had four gold nodes. The smaller caves, um, actually none of them had gold that I found. So it was... Uh, Pretty bad, but like I said, I over farmed the gold. Uh, copper was actually a, a bit of a limiting resource, but uh, with that destroy uh, a tip, you should be able to get a lot of gold back, which will save you some farming. Now I set up my base uh, up in M10 on that map. Here we are in one of the first caves in M10, the northern cave in M10. This is where I set up my initial base. And uh, here we are at the lake um, in N10. There's an underwater cave here. This one actually had four gold nodes. It was pretty good. 
So you're going to be spending a lot of time in caves mining stuff. I've noticed a lot of the caves have a lot of iron. But uh, there's the occasional uh, gold node. Uh, one recommended tip which wasn't in the list was is to bring your furnace with you. Uh, early on, bring the stone furnace with you. That way you can smelt the copper and the iron on site and it makes it way, way, way less. Uh, which will make it easier to transport back. And you can leave the stone furnace there if you don't have room to bring it back. And then uh, in later gameplay you can actually bring the concrete furnace with you and you can smelt all the gold, titanium, platinum uh, inside the cave. That'll also save you running back and forth, making all those trips. Here I am about two, probably two hours into the playthrough, finally smelting some gold that I found. I did wait until I had my platinum pickaxe before I smelt it, smelted all that gold. Then I started getting into uh, making the, um, the uh, circuits. Uh, and I'll just show you a kind of a parts list of all the stuff you're going to need here uh, in the later game, after the fabricator. Here's kind of a breakdown of um, all the different things that you have to make. It's not exhaustive, but it has most of the quest ones on here. Um, and it doesn't have all the materials required for each one, but I wanted to show the electronics needed for each thing. So we got fabricator 60, really expensive. Material processor 80, and electric furnace 60. These are the, some of the big ticket items. Uh, it works out to 227 electronics needed, but um, you can, once you've made the composite, you can destroy the material processor and get 40 electronics back. And then once you've cooked the composite in electric furnace, you can destroy it and get half the materials back. So you can get 30 electronics back that way. So that's what this minus radar, minus extractor, minus materials processor here is. Now, initially I, um, I mined up 454 gold gold ore nodes which uh, which which was about 13 uh, nodes a lot of stuff so I over farmed the gold but in, in actuality because you can back these things back out because you can refund things you only need about 356 gold ore you need also you need 12 gold ore don't turn it into ingots save 12 gold ore for the composite paste uh, and then it all works out to yeah, about 10 nodes. But you're going to need a ton of copper as well. This is the total copper ore, copper ore needed. Uh, 1032. Uh, but also, it's less than this because you can get some stuff refunded. Just remember that key point. Material processor can be destroyed for getting for getting half the materials back. Once you've got the composite paste done. And then once you've cooked the composite paste in electric furnace, you can safely destroy the electric furnace uh, to get half the materials back. The uh, rest of the video will be me kind of going through the motions uh, with all the grinding um, <laughs> uh, edited out. So this will be about, I don't know, 14 hours of footage edited down the next uh, 16 minutes or so. So yeah, I make some circuits and then I actually end up moving out of the cave and building a stone building because I ran out of room. But uh, next up here, what are we doing? Organizing materials, getting ready to move, I think. So here we are in the new stone base with a lot more room. Making some carbon paste in the old mortar and pestle, which will cook in the concrete furnace for carbon fiber. Which I think we need for the fabricator. That was the... That's the kind of one of the big early, uh, mid milestones is getting that fabricator up. Actually early milestones because the other stuff is quite a bit more expensive. You're going to need a, quite a bit of aluminum as well. I left that off the list but aluminum I had way more aluminum than I needed so just make sure to mine up about uh, 80 or so of it. Here we go. Fabricator. This is the big milestone early on. Probably two or three hours into the playthrough. It was my second time building it because I did it in Avalanche, so it was it seemed less grindy and I was a little bit more prepared. This one unfortunately you can't deconstruct because you're gonna need it right to the very end. Here's some of the materials needed for the electric furnace. Uh, I did a parts list earlier on, so you 
you have all the uh, breakdowns as well, but kind of just show you some of the stuff here needed. We have to build most of this stuff. The material processor, pretty expensive. Needs titanium. Uh, the extractor, which will build... You probably want to build that last. I ended up building a flashlight to try it out. You'll need the biofuel generator. I recommend the titanium pickaxe once you get this unlocked. And then the material processor. Expensive. And the radar. The radar is the tricky one because it needs those composites. Which needs uh, both the material processor and the electric furnace. I didn't build any rifles or any fancy gear. I just used uh, a bow. The longbow. And that was good enough for this mission. There's not a lot of threats. Um, mainly wolves and cougars out in the snow. I didn't encounter any polar bears. I hope they... Uh, the flashlight's really nice and bright. But uh, I hope they tone it down a bit because it's actually too bright. You can see way into the back of the uh, cave with it. And it's actually fairly cheap to make. So next up, oh I just wanted to show you I was in a cave here. I brought my concrete furnace. So if you find a big cave with tons of gold, uh, it's worthwhile bringing it. Okay, here we are, during a storm, making the material processor. That was in the next big milestone. Such a little thing. It doesn't require power. And inside here we're going to make the, the composites composite paste and this is where you need the gold ore so save 12 gold ore don't smelt it all luckily I didn't make that mistake here we are making the composite paste this is probably like an hour later <laughs> So next up after this is the electric furnace where we cook this stuff. And it will need the biofuel generator, some biofuel, and the wiring tool to get it all working. So biofuel uh, composter thing next. I used wood and tree sap to make my biofuel. You also need the biofuel can, which is uh, 25 iron. Now I ended up making five cans in the end. Because I took one can out to the drilling rig later on, later on realized uh, I needed six cans and I had to make a return trip bringing five cans the next time. And it takes a while for that stuff to make. So once you get the biofuel composter up, I recommend making your six cans of biofuel. Just get it started right away because it takes a long time. Probably about 30 real minutes to get six cans worth. And you can load in six empty cans, uh, 600 wood, and 600 tree sap, and it'll just, it'll just go to town. Next up here is getting the, um, actually you'll need more than six cans. You'll need six cans for the extractor. Actually, I lied. It might have been a bug, but when I, when I used the generator here, it didn't end up using any biofuel, which is really odd. It might be a bug, so don't... They might fix that, or it might be intended, I'm not sure. So generator's down. This thing's pretty honking huge, so you might need uh, some space. Then we need the electric furnace. And you'll need that wiring tool. Once you've wired up the um, electric furnace, here we go with the electric furnace, we're about to make it. This was a very expensive and long ordeal to make this one. We're going to take that, place it down. And then get out the wiring tool. After we make it, I think I still have to make it. Yeah, requires a little bit of gold. I think 8 ingots and then 20 copper. Once you've done wiring those two together, 
and making and cooking your composite, you can safely deconstruct the wiring tool. You won't need it again if you want to get some of that gold and copper back. I thought I would need it to power the extractor, but it just requires fuel. It doesn't require any wiring. Here we go. Electricity, electric tool, electricity tool. I've heard a lot of players getting, having troubles with this, but basically click on the generator and then it starts spanning a wire out and then click on the electric furnace. Put the fuel in the fuel slot, not the top s slots. <laughs> And then uh, turn it on and you should uh, be ready to go. Get that 12 composite paste fired in the electric furnace. Start cooking. Now, once this is cooked up, it's safe to deconstruct the materials processor sitting in the back there to get half materials back. And once this is all cooked up, you can safely deconstruct the electric furnace to get half the materials back. That'll save you grinding a lot of copper and gold. Gotta get a screenshot of that. The industrial setup. And I think it's probably safe to... Notice how it's not using fuel, which is probably a bug, but... It's probably safe to deconstruct the um, biofuel generator as well once you've cooked everything. Just make sure. Make sure you got everything you need before you start deconstructing things. Next up is the radar, now that we have the 12 composite. Here we are, I'm destroying the electric furnace to get some materials back. Or thinking about it. <laughs> okay, so the radar is done. As mentioned before, the G-slot can only hold one thing. So I had to stop using my backpack I ended up putting the radar on the G-slot to start doing the scanning. So we'll do that first. We'll get rid of the backpack. Which reduces our storage a little bit, but uh, put the radar on the G-slot. And then head out to do some scanning. I just did the first scan right outside my building here. So it takes a while to do the scan, about, I don't know, 20 seconds or so, or so, and then it'll show you kind of a circle with a colored region that points in the direction, or yellow region. So there's the circle. The yellow thing is pointing in the direction of where the exotics are. So move outside of that circle in the direction that it's pointing. If you're too close, it'll give you this error message here, too close. So I ran a little bit more uh, to the northwest. Now the exotic location is the same for every player. I thought it might be random, but it's in the same place, uh, which I'll show you a bit later here. Try plopping it down here again, but it was too close. You can see it on the little kind of LCD screen there. So I moved more into the uh, arctic biome in an L10 there and did another scan, which I'll show you in a sec here. So here we are uh, closer in doing another scan and see you can see the uncertainty. The yellow band got smaller, which means we're closer and it's pointing in more a more precise direction. And we got hit by a bear. And I basically treat it like a bull. <laughs> Let him run towards me. Shank him in the face, or try to when he gets close. Timing gets a little bit touchy. It works on polar bears too. Just make sure that you don't time, you don't wait too long, or he'll he'll take a chunk out of you. But I left this fight in because it's uh, it was pretty entertaining. 
I find this better than using the, the bow. I find it easier because you're not fiddling with the bow. And it works pretty well. Oh, he rolled over. He's not dead. He's just plain dead. Okay, now he's, now he's fully, fully dead. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, um, I didn't bring the fabricator with me and all the mats to make a uh, the extractor. Here we are doing another scan closer to the exotics. And it'll show you the actual exotics once you get close enough. So you can see them in there. Actually, I'm not there yet. Sorry. False alarm. Here we are, closer. <laughs> okay, now you can see it. That little green dot that looks like a cube, kind of. That's where the exotics are. We'll get a bit closer so you can see what they look like. And that's in... Uh, I can't remember the grid, but you can see it there on the map. So here's what it looks like. No, unfortunately I didn't have the extractor with me because the radar was in the, in the G-slot. So I had to run all the way back to base. Uh, this probably added some time to my playthrough. Here we are. We're back with the extractor. Probably 30 minutes later. Actually, probably a little bit more than that because I think I got hit by a blizzard. And I only brought one f fuel can with me because um, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought one can would be enough. So we'll plop that one can in there. And it actually goes through the fuel pretty quickly. It probably only takes about 10-15 seconds. Now there's no spawns, no animals will come at you. It's pretty safe to do this. Uh, there are animals roaming around, so you have to keep your eye out, but it doesn't trigger any attacks. So since I only, I only had one can, I had to go all the way back to base, unfortunately. I took this one empty can back, and I cooked up five cans. There are quite a, wolves, quite a few wolves on the way, but uh, pretty easy to take care of. Here, here I am, cooking up the other five cans of biofuel, which took about 20-30 minutes. Uh, so good time to get a coffee and go stealth in your base. But keep an eye out, because uh, you never know when a bear will knock on your door. Stuff like this in the game, I don't really enjoy just sitting waiting for stuff to happen. It's kind of boring. We'll speed through a little bit of this. Uh, on the way back, I get hit with a blizzard. And there's a bug in the game right now where the snow falls through the ceiling of your, of your shack. I definitely recommend bringing a wood shack and one or two fireplaces to stay warm. Here we are, we're back with the fuel. Get that sucker going. You can see it uses the fuel pretty quickly. I backed up because I kept I kept I was paranoid that I was gonna get attacked, but didn't happen. I also have a one by one shack with a save to spawn point just in case I do die, but I thought I might get attacked by a mammoth or something, but there was no attacks. Actually a few wolves attacked, but it took about five minutes to go through all the cans. Maybe a bit less. Didn't go through the final can fully, but... Uh, and here I am back at the dropship. Now I ended up getting 181 exotics. Um, I did see some forum posts out there saying you need to put the exotics on your inventory slots to b bring them back. But it doesn't turn out to be the case. I just left them in my inventory and ended up getting them all. You know, I was got ambitions. So you'll be looking real good to them right now. Yeah, like I said, I got 181 exotics out of the trip. Definitely not the best way to get exotics. Um, that earlier mission on the uh, mission tree, much better way to do it. But I hope you fo uh, found this guide useful. And hopefully it saves you some time and makes your, uh, your mission go much smoother. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you all later. Uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up uh, if you like this video, if you found it useful. And if you like these kind of guides and videos, uh, hit, hit that subscribe button. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.